It is week 13 of the NFL season. I have three early line shopping, positive expected value bets for you guys to lock in for this upcoming NFL week 13 betting slate. It's something that I did last week and we had a ton of success. I gave out three picks on this YouTube channel, all of them given out same day, Monday, early in the betting slate. We went 3-0. I had the Cowboys covering the spread against the Commanders. They did that with ease. I had the 49ers covering the spread against the Seahawks. They did that with ease. And then I had the Steelers beating the Bengals. I'm not going to say they did that with ease, but they did, in fact, beat the Bengals going 3-0 and on last week's picks. Hopefully, we can continue it for this upcoming week. Three more to lock in. Make sure to subscribe if you are not already. And let's get into it. So the first play that we're going to go ahead and lock in here is the Cowboys minus eight and a half. It's minus 104 odds at Sport Trade. Now, if you're located in Colorado or New Jersey, I recommend downloading and using Sport Trade. Use promo code MODI. If you sign up, they consistently have the best odds. If you are not located in any of those states, it's at minus 110 odds at Caesars. So this line opened up at Cowboys minus seven. I took it at that number. I hammered it. I absolutely loved it there. And now it's best offered at minus eight and a half. And I still like it at that number if you can get it at eight and a half. Most other books at the time of this recording have this spread at minus nine or minus nine and a half. And we all know the drill with the Cowboys at this point in time, right? It's a tale as old as time. Anytime they play an inferior opponent, they beat the living shit, the living daylights, excuse my language, out of those teams. And the Seahawks, sure, they have a winning record overall. They're six and five. I'm not a believer in the Seahawks. I think that they are a fraudulent football team. DVOA, most advanced stats don't have the Seahawks highly rated. And so it's not that super hot of a take. So with the thought in mind that the Seahawks are frauds, let's look at the Cowboys and what they've done to bad teams. They're eight and three. Seven of their eight wins have come by 20 plus points, which is just insane. 20 plus, plus points in seven of their eight wins. And here is their margin of victory of their of those seven wins. 40 points, 20 points, 35, 23, 32, 35. It's just crazy the amount of whooping the Cowboys have put on inferior opponents. And I think that continues on Sunday. Now the Cowboys get a reeling Seahawks team that have lost three of four including in those three of four losses, a 34-point loss to the Ravens. And then, as I mentioned, an 18-point loss to the 49ers last week. And the Cowboys specifically, since that 49ers game, since that debacle in October, their offense has been on fire. They've, they've basically given the keys to Dak Prescott and they've thrown the ball a lot. And they've had a ton of success. So I don't see a reason why that won't continue. I think Dak is going to put up another 300-plus passing yards in terms of player props. Definitely watch out for that. I think the Cowboys are going to score another 40 plus points and have a hard time seeing the Seahawks even get the 20 in this one. So I think the Cowboys keep rolling, uh, cash the minus eight and a half point spread. Next up, 49ers versus Eagles. I'm taking the 49ers minus two and a half. It's minus 110 odds at Fandle. Now this line movement has been insane. It opened up mostly as a pick em, right? You could get the 49ers or Eagles money line pretty much at minus 110 across the board. Now it's been bet up to 49ers minus two and a half or three, mostly three everywhere. And the money line odds are minus 145. Insane line movement. And I understand what everybody's going to say. Number one, how can you bet against the Eagles as an Eagles fan? And then the second thing people are going to say is how can you bet against the 10 and one Eagles as home underdogs? But the odds have been <clears throat> skyrocketing in favor of the 49ers. And I think for a reason, it's probably going to end about minus three. So I do think that the minus two of five, uh, excuse me, minus two and a half point spread that we're going to get is going to be positive expected value and be positive CLV. Again, that's just my prediction. And the reality is the Eagles just can't keep playing the way that they're playing and continue to win football games, right? You can't just continually go down 10 points, turn the ball over twice and expect to win, especially against the team as good as the 49ers. Eventually the Eagles luck is going to run out and also the schedule and also just in terms of how the Eagles have gone, not doing the Eagles any favors. So the Eagles played on Monday Night Football. Then they played the Bills on a short week. They beat the Bills. They got lucky to win that game again. But in that game against the Bills, they gave up almost 500 yards of offense and their defense played in 90 plus snaps. Now they have to play against another physical team in the 49ers 
And the 49ers are coming off of a an extended apps or extended rest, excuse me, playing on Thursday night. So the 49ers are going to have extra rest against an Eagles team that is going to be very, very tired after the Bills game. And the reality is the 49ers, they're just playing better football than the Eagles. They're second in total DVOA. They have the best offense, the sixth best defense. And even if you look at their three-game losing streak, that happened to be when both Debo Samuel and Trent Williams were out. With them in the lineup, the 49ers <coughs> just simply don't lose. And their margin of victory isn't quite on the Cowboys level. Still pretty impressive. Here's their margins of victory in their, on their, all their wins. 23, 7, 18, 19, 32, 31, 13, and 18. They're playing about as good as you can imagine. <clears throat> and they're fired up after losing to the Eagles in the playoffs last year. I think the 49ers do get the job done and win in Philadelphia as our second pick. And last up, third pick of the slate. Panthers plus six and a half, minus 122 odds at Sport Trade. This one, we are admittedly paying for some juice at minus 122 odds, but every other book either has this at five and a half or five. And the minus 122 price is still pretty good compared to the market. So there is something uh, in terms of positive expected value here. Now, don't get me wrong. The Panthers are a train wreck, but <clears throat> six and a half points is just too much against the Bucks team who also stinks and the Panthers get the benefit of the uh, the bump of a fired head coach, right? We all also know the drill with this one. It's a tale as old as time. The team fires their head coach, immediately plays better in their first game after the firing. Now, obviously, it doesn't last the entire season, but that they do receive a bump in that first game. Since 2018, 13 head coaches have been fired midseason. In the first game, post-firing, those teams have a record of 8-5 and five straight up. Every other game after that, they have a combined record of 29 and 55. Now, I'm not quite going as bold as saying the Panthers are going to win this one straight up, but I do think that they're going to be able to cover the spread and keep it pretty close. Again, the Bucs, they're pretty bad too. The Bucs started 3-1. and one. They have gone 1-6 and six since their only win against the bad Will Levis and Titans team. Now, the Panthers are obviously bad as well. That's why Frank Wright got fired in the first place, but for one game... <clears throat> I think they are able to manage to keep it close against the bad Bucks team as our third and final pick of the evening. Three picks for you guys to lock in after going 3-0 last week. Let's hope we can keep it going this week. If you are riding, make sure to comment and let me know. Other than that, remember to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thanks for watching and have a good one.